Not all cables and ropes are created equally. In this video, I'm gonna cover cable and rope options for a DIY pulley system and give you my opinion on which one I think is best. You might be thinking, haven't you already covered this before? And I would say, you're right. Kind of, but this time I'm going deep, real deep. Since posting my last pulley video, I've received a ton of suggestions on different ropes and cables to try out. By the way, links to all this stuff is located in the description of this video. By purchasing from those links, you're helping to support the channel. Safety first. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. Vinyl coated cable is pretty much the industry standard. I've used it, it works, but it's not the easiest option for people. And in most cases, it may be more than you actually need. Pros, it's inexpensive, strong, and has no elasticity. Cons, it's hard to cut and hard to tie off. Next on my list is paracord. It's pretty great for lightweight applications. Pros, it's inexpensive, easy to cut, and easy to tie off. Cons, you can pretty much always feel some elasticity. It has a lower weight capacity than the others, and it's thin enough to get stuck between the wheel and the housing on some pulleys. Before we continue, let's take a quick detour and talk about pulleys. In my last video, I bought a bunch of different pulleys, I tested them all out, and I gave my opinion on which ones are best. The aluminum is the most versatile, it's super affordable, and it's buttery smooth, but it has a gap between the pulley wheel and the housing. This is only an issue with thinner rope and wire options. These little guys aren't great for metal cables, but other than that, they're pretty amazing. Smooth, affordable, and basically no gap. A wall-mounted version has recently popped up on the scene. I like the idea, but the execution isn't great. Many reviewers talk about the weld breaking, which is pretty much a deal breaker. I've only used mine in testing over the last few weeks, and I can already see the base plate is starting to bend. Okay, back to the main topic, ropes and stuff. A step up from paracord is this, polyester accessory cord. Now it runs about the same price as paracord, but it is slightly thicker and has less elasticity. So if I was gonna choose between the two, I'd go with this one. Pros, it's inexpensive, strong, and easy to work with. Cons, you can still feel some elasticity under heavy weight. Next is Kevlar cord. I picked this up on a recommendation from a commenter, but upon receiving it, it is way too thin to be used for anything. So I'm not even gonna take it out of the packaging. I'm just gonna send it back. I'm sure it's plenty strong and everything, but it's so thin, I can't see it being a viable option. I guess I should have paid closer attention to this video in the product listing. I got a lot of recommendations for climbing rope, which makes sense if people trust this with their lives, it's probably safe enough to use in the home gym. There are two main categories of climbing rope, static and dynamic. Basically, the difference between the two is the dynamic rope is made to stretch and the static rope is not. I'd say for most people in the home gym, you probably don't want stretchy rope. I really like this stuff, but the one thing you have to pay attention to is the thickness. I originally got the 10 and a half millimeter, which is too thick for some of the pulley wheels. I'd recommend going with the eight millimeter. It'll work with just about any pulley. Pros, it's strong enough to save your life. It's inexpensive, it's easy to cut, it's easy to tie off, and it's not stretchy. Cons, it may be too thick for some pulleys. Another awesome thing about the climbing rope is that it comes with two heavy duty carabiners, which is a must when you're doing a DIY pulley system. Also, these ends are already tied off, so that's pretty badass. Even if you cut it down to some length, you still have one side that's already good to go. Next on the list is Dynema rope. Dynema, Dynema, am I saying that right? Whatever it's called, this was highly recommended by a lot of people. It's apparently very strong, little to no stretch, and it's only slightly more expensive than paracord and polyester accessory cord. Let's crack it open and see. Ooh. And the verdict is, this stuff definitely lives up to the hype. I felt absolutely no stretch. It was easy to cut, easy to tie off, and compared to the climbing rope, it was slightly easier to work with too. The only thing is there's a slight waxy feel to the surface, so make sure you tie a good knot so it doesn't slip out. Pros, it's affordable, strong, no elasticity, easy to cut, easy to tie off. Cons, there's a slight waxy feel. 
In my opinion, this Dyneema rope is the best rope option, but rope may not work for everyone. For this last option, we're actually gonna circle back to the beginning. Vinyl coated cable. This is coated in shiny black vinyl, so it looks legit. In order to do it this way, you'll need the following. Vinyl coated cable, something to cut the cable. I use bolt cutters. These stainless steel thimbles for the ends. You need something to clamp the ends of the ropes. You can use these wire rope clamp clips, which are the cheapest and easiest option. The downside to these is that they're bulky and the nuts can become loose over time. Nah, dude, for that professional look, you want this. It's called a double barrel ferrule. It's slim, easy to install, and strong as f in order to install it, you'll need one of these. It's called a crimping tool. So yeah, it's kind of expensive, but if you want that professional look, this is the only way to go. The last thing you're gonna want is one of these. It's a rubber ball stopper. Start off by figuring out what length of cable you need, add eight to 10 inches to that to account for the ends, and cut. Slide two ferrules on, and then add the ball before making a loop and going back through. Add the thimble to the loop, and get rid of as much slack as possible. Slide the ferrules back up, making sure they're holding both sides of the cable, and then use the crimping tool to lock the ferrules in place. I do three crimps per ferrule, and this side is done. Look how good that looks. I don't need a ball on this side, so it's just two ferrules and a thimble. When you're buying supplies, it's important that you're getting the right ferrules for the wire and the right crimping tool for the ferrules. I'll link to the stuff I bought, but I'm pretty sure I overdid it on this crimping tool. It was 60 bucks, but you can probably get away with something in the 30 to $40 range. Some of the crimping tools are able to cut wire as well, which is a plus. And there it is. Total elapsed time was less than 10 minutes. Oh, what? This also works on polyester accessory cord and other rope options. Sick, bro. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Time for me to clean up this mess. Peace out.